Hi, fellow addict here, but you can call me Daniel. You probably read the title. There's a brief, well, hopefully brief, review of Sentinel, the 3.18 expansion. I have played some hours this league, you know, like everyone else probably. How many? I won't tell you. You can't make me. Anyways, uh, let's talk about Sentinel. As always with my reviews of certain Path of Exile leagues, we are not talking about the patch, we're talking about the league itself, you know, the gameplay, the visuals, the music, the thing that was added and or changed, well, usually added. So if you're like saying, well, dude, you didn't even talk about Arch Nemesis, because, well, Arch Nemesis is the patch, not the league itself. With this out of the way, let's jump in and talk about some gameplay. I'm sure most people who watch this video have played Sentinel, but for the people who didn't, let me briefly tell you how Sentinel worked as well as how I enjoyed the gameplay. In the first area after Act 1, you found a Sentinel box. You got your first Stalker Sentinel and the controller. The controller allowed you to... Yeah, you guessed it, control the Sentinel. <laughs> With 2022 technology, you could pre-allocate, you know, the, the links to the nodes. It's just insane, dude. As you leveled up the controller, it would automatically fill out the links. It was nice to look over the controller for a couple minutes when you got it, plan out a path, set the links, and then ignore it for the majority of the story. Great and easy way to have something complex, but not something you have to open after every level up. Or, you know, controller level up. You know, with Scourge you always had to like reopen the UI. This time you just set it all up in advance, and you go the way you think it's good, and then you just ignore it for the story, and maybe after a couple more tries, and after unlocking maybe a couple more Sentinels, you're like, hmm, maybe I'm gonna look over it again, you know, now that you have more knowledge, now you know how Sentinels work, how fast or slow they are, and maybe you can just change them up a bit, you know, just so they're, I don't know, either shooting faster, shooting multiple times, stuff like this. The notes on the Sentinel controller gave all Sentinels or specific Sentinels more power, and generally made them better faster or gave you more rewards. For me personally, I it, it, it all just felt impactful, you know, and just generally it was just all good. You know, no stat I think was kind of like underappreciated or e ignored or useless. Like they, they kept it I think to a smaller size and it just felt good. We had three Sentinels, Stalker for general mapping, Pandemonium if you had a big pack of mobs you want to empower instantly and the Apex Sentinel which no one cared about. Okay, I'm a bit harsh here, but it was only powering up rare and unique enemies. I'm sure if you used all three, you got a good amount of rewards. But with Arch Nemesis in the game, Apex Sentinels didn't seem like a smart thing to do. At least at the start of 3.18. But like I said, we want to focus on the league, not the patch. But now that was at least my impression you know, of playing Sentinel League. Dude, I love getting one shot by Roas with my first character. Oh yeah, let me just power it up with an Apex Sentinel. It's like, no. <laughs> the higher the empowerment stat was, the tankier the mobs got, and the more damage they dealt. As mentioned with Arch Nemesis mobs now being in the core game, why would we make the game more difficult? Loot, obviously. Just one more shot. Just one more. <laughs> this is a joke, obviously. Don't take this seriously. Anyways, uh, moving on. <laughs> Each empowered monster had increased item yield. I'm guessing that means quantity, but probably not rarity of items. But I, I truly don't know. It was very profitable, just powering up easier mobs in your maps and slaying them. It was also quite exciting powering up mobs from other types of leaks, using it in Delph, Incursion, Delirium, etc. To be honest, I rarely used it outside of maps, but it's great that GGG takes time to make leaks that affect other leaks. You know, they could also just say, uh, no, it doesn't, and then, you know, it doesn't. Kind of how Heist works. <laughs> well, Heist does work, but I think it's the, the normal enemies that spawn in Heist, but the respawning mobs in Heist don't get powered up. Like, the Sentinel just ignores it. Same with Jun and Syndicate. Like, the enemies in Syndicate, I think, also don't get powered up. I'm guessing they had issues or just didn't have time to properly balance it. And that's a fair point, right? If they said, we can't, we don't have time to check the balancing on these mobs when they get empowered, let us just, you know, probably add a marker and say, these mobs can't be empowered or the Sentinel ignores them. It's good, right? It's, it's fine. 
Sadly, Sentinels weren't modifiable, but that meant that finding good Sentinels was quite exciting. Modifiers that gave you a chance to receive a reward from a specific league were quite popular. For example, Expedition Rewards. Expedition Rewards, you know, it's, it's understandable, you know. The dirty gamblers needed their mage blood. Yep. In general, the sheer amount of rewards you were getting from Sentinels reminded me quite a bit of Delirium. But this time, the loot isn't being spitted out in front of you, but you have to pick it up as you run the map. I think GGG really tries to focus on the whole spitting out loot everywhere instead of like focusing at one point. For example, I don't think they're ever gonna do something like Incursion because it just spits out so much loot. On the other side, we got Ultimatum, which also spit out loot. Well, it's gonna be interesting how they're gonna change ultimatum because I don't think they want you to just get a ton of loot in one spot because it's too e too easy to pick up, right? I understand why they do it because instead of running around and grabbing the loot as you kill the mobs, you just do this one content where it that shits out loot and you pick up the loot and you go. I think they want to go away from that. How were you activating the Sentinels? The keys were bound to F2, F3, and F4 keys, but could be changed in the options. I didn't change those keys throughout the entire league. I just, you know, I just got used to them. My general way of playing was to press F2 for the Stalker Sentinel right at the start of the map. You know, you just spawn in, press F2, and you start running. And, you know, it usually hangs around for 40 seconds, so that's fine. While going through the map as per usual, slaying monsters, they were powered up and I got my loot. Later in the map, when my Stalker Sentinel was done and I found a big pack of mobs, or a strong box, I used my Pandemonium Sentinel. Gameplay-wise, it was an easy-to-understand league mechanic with lots of rewards. I do just want to throw this in here, even though it's not in the script. They removed the ability to power up frozen, frozen, you know, time-frozen uh, Legion enemies. I think it was too easy, so they kind of removed that. So you have to destroy the entire legion or the monsters, break them free, and when they're finally free and attacking you, then you could power them up. I liked it before, but yeah, you know, what can you do? Sentinels had charges, so what do you do when they run out? You throw them away. Yep, well, the unique sentinels, which literally can't be recharged. But the normal sentinels, you can fuse together with other sentinels to power them up again and modify them. You know, it's like Yu-Gi-Oh. You just combine, uh, you know, Karibo and the magic card. And suddenly it becomes an effect on the... Wait, no, that was the first season. That made no sense. So we had four different types of items to power up or re-power up and fuse these sentinels together. Uh, they each had their, you know, special thing. Some had higher chance for a special base, which I think was the thing to get unique sentinels or a higher chance to get a unique sentinel. Or giving you a chance to have a higher modifier after combining, right? So like increasing the... Um, the tier of modifier on the sentinel for example if it has increased empowerment and it says 60 and next tier it's 70 for example it's good right you just made a better sentinel hopefully you didn't lose any of the other modifiers you wanted but you know that's that is just what sentinel was all quite easy to understand and they weren't too rare of course there were i think two others doesn't really matter everything was just quite easy to understand and overall they weren't really too rare like i had dozens of them at the end of the league and dozens of sentinels in my sentinel stash which they thankfully added again another stash we can use instead of you know the free to play players having to balance their four stash tabs and like slowly dying not knowing where to put items <laughs> anyway sentinel stash good there were a variety of strategies that i won't go into because i didn't understand them and i also didn't care for them i personally removed every sentinel from my loot filter that wasn't rare so I only had to pick up the really good ones, or at least the ones with the most modifiers. I also hid every Apex Sentinel. Sorry Apex Sentinel, you won't be missed. I think that was the general gameplay of Sentinel. There was nothing else. Let's move on. But Daniel, there was one more big thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh come on, you, you know what I'm talking about. Alright, let's talk about Recombinators. Recombinators allowed you to recombine or fuse items of a specific base type together. 
So if RNG was on your side, you were able to get multiple good modifiers from one item and other good modifiers from another item onto the same base. Or at least one of the bases. You know, it chooses one of the bases. And at the end, you just had a bad item. So that's pretty cool, right? Right. This worked through corrupted and even mirrored items. To be honest, fun to see that GGG is open to experiment, but personally, I just didn't care for it at all. I am an above average pleb. Let's be honest. And I probably didn't fully understand, you know, the entire power and the possibilities of recombinators. I also like to think of new people and people that don't pay for 15 stash tabs. <laughs> Either because they don't want to or can't pay for these microtransactions, you know, like they don't have the money or conversion rate is ass and they don't want to pay for it. Let me go through the steps to recombine an item as far as I know it. And you can call me down in the comments down below afterwards if I'm wrong. <laughs> Step one, you have to pick up magic and rare items on the ground in each map run that you filter highlights. That's already annoying cause stash limitations and inventory limitations. All right, cool, next. Step two, you need to identify them and hope it has modifiers that you want or need. I don't know if the filter can sh only filter out the good modifiers that you want or only filters out tier one modifiers that it can read. I don't know exactly how the filter works. Either way, then whatever, you just pick up the items that your filter shows that has the tier one modifier that you want or at the end of the day, you just pick up all the items that you feel the shows and you identify them and it has the modifier or don't. Either way, you have to pick up rare items and now they're in your inventory. Step three, then you need to store them in your stash tabs, which is really bad for free to play players. All right. Step four, after this, you pray to find a recombinator for the base you need, because there are four of them, like an armor recombinator to combine two pieces of armor. Actually, I think there are two or three. No, I think three or four. I don't know. There were a couple of recombinators that were kind of rare, kind of, I would say. Either way, you need to find it, you know? So it's it's not, it's not like, let me wait three minutes, you know, and, and I get one. No, it's you, you got to play the game. Step five, you finally found one. And now you throw the two bases into the UI to recombine them. And you pray to RNG that it takes the good mods and not the bad ones. On top of the good base. Doesn't this seem absolutely insane for the normal person? I'm sure GGG didn't think of the normal person when creating the system, but for the 1% that throw mirrors around all league. I'm sure they had a fun time, and we saw multiple posts of 6 fractured items and MP doing... whatever he's doing right there. <laughs> it seemed so incredibly annoying, tedious and time consuming as well as stash expensive having to store so many bases and items it felt useless to me so i just sold all my recombinators and ignored that part of the league from week one onwards i hope you get why i disliked it i'm really looking forward to the comments down below i haven't watched grimroll's video i think grimroll um i think palsteron did i think uh, videos on how to use recombinators I personally didn't want to watch them, mostly because I partially wanted to figure it out myself, or at least see it for myself. I don't want, in the first three days of a league, someone to explain me the league. I wanna, I wanna play it. <laughs> I'm a gamer. <laughs> I'm also not saying they should have made it easier, or some sort of way for you to choose a modifier, or to have a higher priority towards a modifier. I'm not talking about that. I absolutely understand that what they're doing is experimenting and figuring things out. And how it was, it is fine. It works. Just like how metacrafting works and people figure it out and use it and create disgusting items. I'm just not the person that will use all these tools, either because I don't understand them, they're too time consuming, stash expensive, or cost too much currency in the game for me to actually try it. Visuals. The thing we see with our eyes. Well, at least this one. This one is lazy. This one doesn't really care about it. Not a lot of visuals we got this leak compared to leaks before like Ultimatum, Expedition, and Scourge. But what is here is good. The UI looks fancy, works, and that is all it needs to do. On top of that, recombining things or fusing Sentinels together gave us a new way of displaying modifiers as well as the effect. 
I mean, just look at that. Just, you probably watch gameplay anyways. It looks beautiful. The effects and the lens flare and the effects, just, yes, beautiful. The Sentinels had their lasers, the light effects and the different colors. And empowered enemies have an effect on them, which is strong enough to see in a wave of enemies and effects, which is very important to know which enemies are empowered, right? And a sea of like 50, 100 mobs, and you see the, the 20 or something that walk between them. Like, you see that effect. Unless you have dynamic resolution, well, then rip you. But, you know, just turn that off or mega lol. Every visual seemed good, so let's move on to music and sound. Something I very much appreciate in this game and very much love. And I still cringe when I see streamers streaming without sound. I am literally dying in, uh, like I'm literally dying of cringe. There was an official blog post about the sounds in Sentinel and it was quite interesting to read. If you want to read that article, link is in the description down below. But in the game, the sound was good. You heard each sap the Sentinels did as well as them activating. But what I look more forward to is the music each league which sadly had no place at all. At least I didn't realize it. Kind of sad to see it happening, right? The, the music that Camille makes, and it's just literally just a, you know, a trailer song or theme. And I'm like, I kind of want, I kind of want it in the game. <laughs> but maybe it would have been too much having the League theme from the trailer activate every time you click a Sentinel. Like, 50% of the map would have just been the Sentinel theme, and I think that's a bit much. If you haven't heard the Sentinel theme in a while, I highly recommend listening to it again. I like listening to the trailers during my workouts and hearing the theme kick in just, just pumps me up. Camille did a good job, you know, just... Now, to my conclusion. This league was a 7 out of 10 in my opinion. It was the definition of good. They had a lot of work to do implementing Arch Nemesis on top of having no balance changes. Memes aside, I don't focus on the patch but the league itself and all considered, this league was good. Everything had its place, worked and was just plain fun. Knowing the league name of 3.19 now, I really hope for a big league, you know, like big, like B-E-E-G, anyways, similar to Expedition or even a brand new master maybe, please for the love of god. We will see what 3.19 has in store, as always I will be reacting to the live stream the next week or, well, I think when this video comes out it's probably the day, so go come by, you know, probably the second or first link in the description, go check that out, go just, just come on, just come on over, just just, 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 okay. Come. Wait. As an annoying YouTuber, I have to remind you that you have to subscribe and you you have to like this video. Like you you, you just you better like the video. <laughs> this is the outro. What do you expect? Quality content or let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed the league and how did you enjoy it or what was specifically just keeping your interest throughout the entire league or maybe what. What's the thing that you're like, no, this is just absolute garbage, I'm just gonna go. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. You better like the video now, I swear to God. <laughs>